Good evening, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66-Day Challenge 3.0, and today is day 41. So yesterday we started our series on campaigns with a direct mail campaign from a postcard created in Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to create a paid social media campaign for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So we're going to do that by clicking on Create a New Campaign. We came into our campaign submenu here on the bottom left, seventh icon down. We clicked on create a new campaign. And then we clicked on social ad for a paid social media ad. So we're just going to put in test as we did before. Let's just say we're going to run a, um, a listing to attract buyers. So let's do an ad featuring one of our listings in order to attract buyers towards it. And where will your campaign run? So you do have the ability to create one ad and then run it on all three of these channels, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. At the same time, you can do two at the same time or just select one. So I'm gonna stick with Facebook right now. I found it is the most popular place where most KW agents are running their ads. So let's go ahead and run through that. I'm gonna click on Setup Campaign here on the right-hand side. So right off the bat, I have the ability to come in and add a listing should I choose to. So you can see right off the bat, it shows me three of the listings that I have available. Let's go ahead and click on Lodge Meadows Drive. And it's going to go ahead and bring in the front photo of the drive. Now I, of the uh, listing, excuse me. Now I do have the ability if I want not to feature this photo if I have another photo or something that I've actually created in designs that might look a little sharper I can use that instead of this photo as well now this information that's right here this is coming directly from the public description of the listing uh, so I can come in and change that should I want to as well so let's click on add text first and you can see the main copy, I'm limited to 250 characters. And again, this information is brought in from the listing description. Now, here's one thing I will say about running these ads. Um, the goal, obviously, on most of these ads is one, to get exposure and two, to get leads. Um, if you want somebody to click on the ad, there has to be kind of something that you're holding back, if you will. I think the saying goes, if you get the milk, why would you buy the cow? Or why would I buy the cow if I can get the milk for free? Something along those lines. Bottom line is, if you tell them about the house, everything that's in it, what the price is, square footage, blah, 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 blah. Well, there's no real need to click on the actual ad because you've given them all the information that they need. So sometimes there's a good to have a little bit of mystery. Check out this beautiful home. Uh, give them a little bit of information. Maybe withhold the price. Maybe withhold uh, when it goes live. Something along those lines. You know, and then your call to action would be uh, click here to find out uh, the price and more information. Something along those lines. So that way they're actually clicking into your ad. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and crop this last sentence off and leave this main copy as it is. Um, the headline, when I start typing in the headline, you'll see it's going to start loading in here. So I could put something about uh, click here for more information. And the description is the main copy, right? So oh, I'm sorry, the description is going to be what shows up here in your <coughs> CTA link, I believe, right? So, um, to find out the price, square footage, and to arrange a private showing, please click the Learn More button, right? So I can put that in here, and that's showing up down here so that they also have the ability to click on the Learn More, right? And I can even put quotations around it. I might put it in all caps if I wanted it to stand out. Uh, so do that and then do that. Okay. And I can then click on save ad text. So here's the uh, main copy text. Here is the headline. Maybe I'll put an exclamation point in there. And here is the description down here at the bottom. So I can click on save ad text. Next, I have the ability to configure the ad media. Again, I told you we could change this photo if I had something else that I wanted to go with. Um, I could click on select media. 
It brings in all of the listings of the photo. So if I wanted to add additional images, I could. If I wanted to add a video, I could do that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the image that they brought in, but just know that you do have the ability to come in here, delete this image, change the aspect ratio, crop it, um, you know, make it look perfect for what you're actually looking for it to be. Uh, next, I wanna click on Facebook ad, and it's going to pull up my account, and then it's gonna show the pages that I already have connected, my business pages that I have connected to my Facebook profile. Now, in order for these to show, I've got to make sure that I am connected in the settings menu um, underneath, I believe it's command settings uh, and then uh, applications, connected applications. So I want to make sure that my Facebook is connected in those connected applications. Um, on step two, you can see destination. This is really important for people to kind of pay attention to. Um, you have two options here. So you can use a Facebook lead gen form and it will pop up a, um, a, a pop-up, right? Lack of a better word. It's a pop-up that shows up um, that Facebook has created that automatically fills in their name, their email, and their phone number if they have it associated with their Facebook account. They have to submit that information to you before then being directed to your CTA destination. If you go with use a site or landing page, then they don't, right? So Facebook won't automatically pop up uh, that ad. I actually did some A-B testing and I'll show you here in a second. I have found that using a site or landing page gets you significantly more exposure, but obviously you don't always get the leads because if you're sending them to a landing page, then you have to have, they're gonna have to register on their own accord on the landing page for you to get the lead, right? So. Uh, the difference here, it's basically forced information, right? So you may not get as much exposure. Here, it is just a lot of exposure, but not necessarily as many leads. You do have the ability to change this button in the bottom right-hand corner by clicking on this drop-down. So you can do learn more, sign up, contact us, or apply now. And then destination URL. This is basically where they are going to go um, on either one of these two. So it's either follow-up destination or destination but regardless it's where you're going to send them either once they click on learn more or after they fill out the facebook pop-up then where are they going to go to right so uh, this could be a landing page that you have already created with sites um, so you can see here there's a whole bunch of landing pages that are actually from my website so i might send them to one of those pages um, I might actually create an independent uh, landing page for just this listing. I could send them there. So there's a variety of different places that I can send them, but I do have to send them somewhere. So right now I'm just gonna send them to my website. Uh, the next thing is ad targeting. So it kind of defaults to where this listing is in radius 20 miles. I can click on custom settings, and then I have the ability to target a custom audience or I can target my database by creating audiences. So previously I created an audience of all KW agents. Um, depending on how many people that you have in your database, you can create a new audience, put in the test or the list name, and then you could target by ad, uh, tags, excuse me, or neighborhoods. Now here's the only caveat. The email that is associated with the contact in your database has to be the email that they use to log into Facebook, right? So Facebook has a minimum of 100 people for that audience, and those 100 people all have to be utilizing the email that they log into Facebook with. So I will show you just kind of as a test, um, I could select this KW Agents audience, and it's gonna give me an error message that says the audience is too small. Well, I know that there's 511 people in this audience, so how can that be? Well, because it's KW Agents, the majority of us use our kw.com email when we're corresponding with other agents, and it's not the email that we use to log into Facebook with. So that's the issue that I'm having there of not being able to actually use that as a custom audience. So you would want to go through and really work on getting the emails that people are using, utilizing in Facebook um, in order to create that audience. So I'm going to target a custom audience. We're gonna go ahead and use Katie. I'm good with 20 miles. 
And then I can also come in and add interests. So this is a listing. I can search for interest. If I click on this drop down box, it's going to show me an entire list, right? I mean, it's a detailed list. I can also search interest. So I might search for real estate. Let's see if anything comes up there, right? So you can see there um, some of these things you can see that maybe people are so real estate investing anything along those lines i might look up things like zillow pretty sure that is available in facebook um, so if somebody is already interested in zillow a good chance they might be interested in buying a house um, i could do trulia and see what comes up there i can do mortgage and you can see mortgage and loans and some other mortgage calculator some other opportunities there so you can do or or you can do and my recommendation is always do or because and would mean they have to like all of those um, selections that you have just chosen so they would have to like trulia they would have to like zillow and they would have to like mortgage loans if you do or it can be they like trulia or they like zillow or they like mortgage loans so just kind of be careful as you go through choosing your interests once you have kind of gone through your custom settings, you can save your ad. And then the last opportunity is to come in and select a budget and a duration. Now, when we visited Facebook during fish, uh, during, fish during mega camp, uh, they did advise that you run your ads for a minimum of seven days and a maximum of 30 days. Um, you can see KW actually recommends a 10 day campaign. Um, and a minimum budget of $1, Facebook actually recommended 2 to $3 per day. Um, so you can see this ad as it defaults is a 10-day ad, $3 or daily per channel or $30 total. Because this is only going to Facebook, all the money is going into Facebook. However, I do have the opportunity if I had done Facebook and um, Twitter or Facebook and Instagram, I could have divided it up to say $10 um, you know, per, um, per channel. And then basically it'd be, I don't know what that'd be a dollar per day, right? Per channel. So you could go through and kind of change that up. Once you have decided on your duration and budget, next, all you have to do is go to publish your campaign. And from there, it's going to ask you one more time, are you ready to go? And it's going to start moving forward and charging you from there. So I'm not going to do that. But that's basically the process is come in, name the goal, create your ad text, make sure the media is the one that you want to do, um, target your ad, and you can use basic all the way up to super custom settings there, and then decide on your budget and then go for publish. So pretty straightforward. I did want to show you, um, yes, we're going to leave this. This is some, um, when I say A-B testing, I ran the exact same ad. I actually duplicated it within campaigns. And the only thing I changed on these two ads that you see in front of you is that the uh, top ad was the um, direct, uh, basically did not have the Facebook pop-up. It was the second option that just sent them to a landing page. I actually sent them to a, um, a Google form page, hoping that they would sign up there, um, but I didn't require it. So they could get to that page from there. This second page, essentially had that sign up uh, that Facebook popped up and then they were directed actually to my website from there. So you can see that they were both run for 10 days. Um, cost per mil, that's how much it costs to get a thousand impressions. And so you can see $2.19 to get a thousand impressions as compared to $52 to get a thousand impressions. So this top ad it got significantly more impressions, almost 14,000 impressions. I mean, that's how many people saw the ad versus 568. It got 13 clicks versus only 12. However, this ad did capture three actual leads. And this was for an open house uh, list. I'm going to do some um, A-B testing on one of my listings that's going through a remodel right now. As soon as it's finished being remodeled, I'm going to run a similar test where I have an ad for the listing, kind of talking about the remodel and, you know, pictures of the house um, and do the exact same thing and see what it looks like. I imagine I'll probably get more than three leads, 
Um, I don't think that the open house one could, it could have been more effective, bottom line. I'm still learning too, right? I'm not perfect at these things. Um, and yet I just thought it was very interesting that it was, I mean, literally almost 24 to one with regards to the number of impressions. So although this ad did not create any leads, it certainly got my name out there, it got my brand out there, um, it got me a lot more exposure. So you kind of have to decide, right, which one of those two ways you want to go. If it's all about the leads, then again, I would recommend the Facebook forced registration or forced pop-up. Um, if it's just about exposure, then you may want to go with the second option. But either way, again, command is kind of a choose your own adventure novel. So it's kind of exciting that you can create the ad that best suits your needs. Maybe you do exactly what I did. You don't even have to do it at the $30 mark. Maybe run it for five days um, at $10 total and do it twice, right? Do the two different ones and see which works best for you. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. And uh, tomorrow we'll talk more about campaigns, but we'll get into the free portion where we can start utilizing um, campaigns for social posts that we do not have to pay for. So look forward to that. Hope you all have a great rest of the night. As always, I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.